Okay, so hi everyone. I figured I'd make this video here um, as a way to pass the time in, in our uh, self-quarantine uh, sort of environment that we live in right now. I'm, I'm sure you're feeling the, the stress and strain and anxiety of um, the situation going on right now. So this is a way that I kind of unwind and have an outlet to um, put effort into is video games and collectibles. It's something that I'm all throughout school. I've um, been my escape from the day-to-day -day stress. And it's kind of how I deal with things. So I figured I would share what I have um, with you and maybe open a dialogue and uh, maybe give you some information. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, and so kind of today, I wanted to start with the origins of that, the origins of my collecting. It starts really with one system, a system that it's still, to this day, one of my favorite systems um, to play, to own, to collect for, um, and it's the Atari 2600. This is actually my my Atari 2600. It's called a Heavy Sixer. It's very, it's got a, it's got a weighted bottom to it. Um, you can see this wood grain here. Very nice. I, I, I love the way the system looks. And of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, Heavy Sixer. Um, there's different variations, different different designs for the uh, Atari 2600 um, that you can find out there. Uh, personally, this is the one that I own and the one that I find um, the best. I like the way it looks. So um, that's one of my favorite systems. Um, one of my favorite games on the system is this game here. Of course, the lettering is backwards here um, because of cameras. But uh, you, get the, you get the idea. It's Berserk, um, which is one of the things that I find most enjoyable about the, the Atari 2600 is the artwork. They, they would hire people um, to draw these, these intricate um, artwork for their, um, for their games to explain and describe what the game is, what it's supposed to represent. And of course this one is this guy just destroying robots and that's what the game is. You wander around, he's a little sick figure, and you shoot and kill robots. It's it's a uh, it's very simplistic, like most games on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. But it's a lot of fun, and it's a a good way that I find to, to pass the time. Um, of course, there's different label variants for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, if you like me, when you were younger, had an Atari, um, you probably had this game right here, Combat. Um, it's got it's actually four games. I don't know if you can tell the, the different quadrants here. Um, again, very detailed, very well thought out artwork to describe what the game is. Um, and it's just a collection of four different variations of uh, combat games, combat themed games. Very common combat. I, I think most people, I would say 90% of the population that, that had an Atari uh, 2600 had combat. But not all the labels for Atari games um, are as beautiful. They have different variations, um, different iterations of the game, uh, reprints, and stuff like that. And so, while some of you might have owned this copy of Combat, some of you might have owned this copy of Combat. Again, the, <laughs> the stuff is backwards here because of the camera, but you, again, you get the idea. It's just a listing. Um, not the beautiful art that you see here, but just a listing of what games or what game is on the cartridge. Um, they just tried different things. That's what's kind of cool about the um, the era of gaming um, when Atari came out. It was, it was kind of the wild, wild west of, of uh, video games. It was still a very new, new medium. And so because of that, you had a lot of um, imagination um, with the art. You had a lot of imagination with what are, what are the cartridges going to look like? Uh, what's the console going to look like? What's... What sorts of things can we do given the limitations of the, the medium? And one company that I particularly enjoy and I collect actively for for the system is a company called iMagic. Now, iMagic, I'll show you my sealed copy of Star, Star Voyager here. This is a company called iMagic. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just love the, the again, the artwork, the this metallic rainbow gradient sort of packaging. It's awesome. Um, iMagic is one of my favorite companies to collect for, like I said. Um, but one unique thing is, again, this is a standard 
Atari 2600 game, flat on the bottom. There's the label right there. Um, nothing too special with this sort of variant. This is an iMagic cartridge. So again, the sort of metallic rainbow variant sort of design, but they also have this weird little handle that says, of course, iMagic here. And the the uh, label, the, the label that you see on the end here, oh, <laughs> on this one is like this. It's actually built into the handle. So it's, it's just a unique looking cartridge that even on the same system, you have different variants different ways to to make a game to to, to make a cartridge um, you, don't, you don't really find that today like obviously if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Nintendo they have a unique feel and a unique vibe and a standardized look for each of those consoles again Atari wasn't the case they just let people do things and uh, the other thing is is when it comes to collecting for Atari is, is nobody has a co complete collection of Atari uh, 2600 games because there are people that would just make games for the system. And it'd be like, they would have like a handful of copies, some dude in New Jersey in his basement making this game, and you could mail in to him, and he would send you a copy of whatever game he was working on. Um, again, you don't really have that today. You have an in independent um, game market, but it's all through um, authorized markets and stuff like that. Whereas, again, Atari was notorious for people just making games for it so because of that there's games that people haven't even found yet there's some that uh, there's only a handful of copies um that i'll never i'll never own in my collection despite having quite a um, a decent uh, i would say a modest to decent size of atari 2600 uh, collection um but of course i want to really emphasize the art of atari it was an amazing system that a lot of people got to express themselves on. And one way that you can really, if you want to know the history and you want to experience the art itself is uh, Tim Lapatino's Art of Atari book. I have raved about this online many times. It's one of my favorite books to just thumb through and look. Um, it has the history and the artwork, um, the history behind the artwork, who's done the artwork, um, the different variations of the console and um, just way way like how they designed the logo of Atari um, which if you don't know like I, you can kind of see on my shirt here the, the three lines that come together um, <clears throat> that was that was a conscious design effort um, and it was designed after uh, Mount Fuji in uh, Japan was the the look of it and it's supposed to mimic the Mount Fuji but then also an A for Atari they did a couple I was gonna see if I could find the page here um, where it talks about in uh, the art of Atari the different the different uh, designs for the logo because um, they again they tried a, a lot of different different stuff and um, oh here's here's a cool page I'll show you so here again so many different variants so again this is the heavy sixer but look at these the different variants here. The the Atari 2600 Junior, which kind of has that uh, almost iMagic feel metallic band to it. Um, the Vader, which is an all black uh, four switch variant of the Atari 2600. They call it the Vader because it looks like Darth Vader's mask. I don't know if you can see on the console itself, um, but it has these these little ridges, and so the all black version of it. I am very much mimics the way that uh, Vader's mask looks. Um, again, I personally like the, the wood grain. It's just so iconic. You don't get that anymore with systems. I wish people would go back to that. Of, of just, just be creative with your system. And, and that's the main thing with Atari that I wanted to talk about. Again, I'll put the book um, up. You can order it on Amazon. Um, I highly recommend it if you are a fan of video games and just want to know more. Um, I've actually, uh, I at one point, I raved about this book online, and uh, Tim Lapatino had actually commented on it and was very appreciative that I enjoyed his book so much. So he's a really down-to-earth person that just loves video games. And it shows through the way he can conduct himself online. 
um, and the passion that he put into this book. I'll just real quick show you some of the some of the art again like the space invaders like look at the art look at the time that people put into these it's it's so it's it's indescribable how amazing it is uh, and asteroids Like the time and attention to detail that that you don't really get in video game systems anymore. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, again, it's a raw uh, sort of video format. This is not scripted or anything. It's just cool things that I have in my collection that I feel like talking about with you. And hopefully it's not too long and hopefully it's enjoyable. If you like this, then I'm... That's the goal. And if you don't like it, then, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I tried my best. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you have a great uh, weekend. Uh, and you have a, a, a time, you know, try to de-stress as much as you can, given the circumstances. And just know that I am, I am a personal believer in community, in the power of community. And I am in this time of... Um, isolation it's important that we are as much of a community as we can be given the circumstances and so reach out to your loved ones your friends your colleagues um, co-workers and just check up on them and make sure that um, they are um, cared for and know that you care for them so um, with that thanks for watching